All right, guys, we got another ballistics test here for you today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be testing the Hornady Critical Defense. This is the 115 grain regular pressure drowned. Uh, this is uh, one of Hornady's uh, premium offerings. We've done several, we've done a couple tests with this before in the past, but I uh, definitely wanted to do this test today because what we're going to be doing is we're going to go be shooting through a hogshead into jugs of water through four layers of denim. So this is going to really give you a good idea of how the, the critical defense is going to uh, stand up against uh, bone and tissue. So the test gun for this is the M&P 9mm 4.25 inch barrel. So let's go ahead and take a shot with the critical defense and see how it runs. Alright, this is the Hornady critical defense, 115 grain. All right, let's see if we captured it. Speed was 1089 feet per second. Okay, there's the entrance rune, and here is your exit right there. So we're not seeing a lot of, of a huge cavity or a huge exit wound uh, due to probably lack of some expansion on that. But um, we definitely hit a couple bones. I would probably hit uh, part of the uh, the mandible and uh, we definitely went through the frontal bone on that one so we had a frontal bone and then we had a probably glancing blow off the mandible so let's go ahead and recover it uh, we have first jug leak in there second jug is leaking right there towards the bottom so hopefully we captured the round let's go ahead and see yep we've got a piece of that bullet right in the second jug third jug is untouched so let's go ahead and open the third, the second jug and uh, pour her out here for you. I'm running solo today, so my, so I'm kind of the whole deal. I'm the cameraman and everything, so. All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and open up jug number one as well, because it looks like the bullet is not entirely intact. Oh, we got a wasp there. I don't know if any if there's any fragments of the bullet in the jug number two. Yep, all right. There it is. There is our jacket and our core. If you can see, let me move this jug off here. Out of the way. So we've got the jacket that's been separated from the core. This is not a bonded bullet. And as you can see, the, uh, the core is uh, the lead's pretty well intact. You can see that it did penetrate that barrier. It did hit uh, some hard barrier there um, and it's uh, been uh, disfigured as w uh, quite a bit. So as you can see we did have some penetration into a barrier because you see some of the hard deformation of the uh, core there and then the jacket uh, came clean off. The pedals are still attached that's good. We still had some retention of that, but that was found in the first jug. Second jug was where the, the lead core was. So let's go ahead and take it back and we'll do some numbers. All right guys, there it is. 0 0.401 at its widest point. Uh, this is the 115 grain Hornady Critical Defense. I'm kind of interested to see what you guys uh, have to say about this test. I am calling it a fail, and I'm calling it that for a couple different reasons. One, we're seeing a lack of, of uniform expansion, okay, symmetrical expansion, and we're also, we saw, and this isn't quite a fail in and of itself, but uh, we're seeing a, a jacket core separation as well. Now I think that there's there's been other rounds we've tested that have had that same thing and uh, for the most part they don't call it a fail just because there's a jacket core separation but I think it does kind of go towards the negative a bit. One of the things that I think Cornady can improve upon is uh, their consistency in their published numbers. I have seen consistent uh, low numbers for this round every gun I've tested it out of. And I think that Hornady could do a little bit better um, in being a little bit more accurate with their stated numbers on their boxes. And that's just me. I think that that's, uh, that's kind of more of an annoyance re re really than anything else. But uh, one of the main reasons we're seeing that uh, probably the, the biggest fail in this test is that Hornady themselves state that this is not a bullet designed to punch through barriers. And the frontal bone of that pig is definitely a formidable barrier. 
And, but I don't think it's an unrealistic barrier. I think that it simulates uh, the penetration through bone very, very um, effectively. And I think it's something that, um, that I don't, and I don't think it's an unrealistic test for this round. I think this round will perform um, in 99% of the concealed carry uh, scenarios. But I do think that there it, that it is lacking a little bit. And I think that's one of the reasons why Hornady came out with their critical duty was to try to um, you know uh, address some of the other issues that the Hornady that the critical defense had. And I think the big one is that uh, uh, its lack of barrier penetration. And I think that's what they tried to remedy in the Hornady, criti the Hornady critical duty. Now, the one thing I don't like about the critical duty is it's not optimized for short barrels. Um, and so, therefore, you know, I, I have a hard time advocating this as a concealed carry load, mainly because um, it's not going to perform as well out of those short barrels. So I know that there's going to be somebody who say, well, regardless of that, this would still be lethal. And I absolutely agree. I think that uh, it it punched through the whole head. It did punch through two jugs of water, and I think that um, you definitely have uh, more than lethal capability with that. If it punched through the heart or a vital organ, it's definitely going to be lethal, and it's going to have some stopping power. But for the most part, I like to see more consistent uh, performance from my from my loads, mainly because you can never guess at all of the scenarios that are possible in a concealed in a concealed carry uh, situation. You just never know. And so for me, I'd like to, and I'm, and I am nitpicky for sure. I, I will admit that. I'd rather be carrying the most consistent performer I possibly can get my hands on, and uh, everybody can afford it. I don't, I don't. The excuses out there that oh well, these rounds are too expensive, you know, to be carrying. They're, they're too, you know, whatever. Uh, for the most part, you know, again, uh, and my opinion is, if you can buy a $500 handgun to carry for concealed carry, you can buy uh, $40 worth of ammunition and carry that as well. So. Now I've had a couple of uh, viewers, uh, subscribers of mine, make some really good points about this round. And one of those is that uh, for those of you that are worried about over penetration, this is going to be a good round to carry, mainly because it they've designed it, I think, to, um, to under penetrate or to not exceed the uh, FBI standards. Now, I don't know if that's, if that's actually uh, Hornady's official stance on this round or not. But uh, I think that, 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 that it's true. I think it's going to underpenetrate a bit. And I think that for those of you that are worried uh, about overpenetration, I think this is a good round to, to, to choose. Uh, now, one of the things that I want to do in the future with this round is I want to test it out of, a, out of a carbine to see what it'll actually do at higher velocities. So if I decide to do some more testing on this round, um, look for that here in the future. All right, guys, that's a look at the Hornady Critical Defense. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And don't forget to rate, favorite, and share the video. It helps the, the video out, and it sure helps our channel grow, and I really appreciate it. Um, and as always, guys, thank you very, very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya. I don't really want to turn this into a review of the TLRS-1, uh, mainly because if you do a Google search for this light, you'll see about a billion different uh, reviews on it. <laughs> so we're not going to really turn it into a review of the, of the light, but let me just run through some quick specs on it. It's a 160 lumen light. Okay, it's got momentary on. Okay, so it's got momentary on. It's got constant on, and it also has the uh, strobe mode, which you double tap.